Welcome to the Bleak Bulimia Podcast with guest Mel Mason, clutter expert, international best-selling author, and host of the Mel Mason Show. Hi, everyone. I am Laurieann. I am the host of Bleak Bulimia. And today I'm so pleased to have Mel Mason with us. Uh, she's the clutter expert, international best-selling author, host of the Mel Mason Show. Well, I'm all nervous having you here, and yet I've met you so many times. <laughs> An adventurous. You don't need to be nervous. Love, we're friends. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's just because I have just been watching you on Instagram, LinkedIn, and all the, the the different platforms, and just amazed at everything that you're doing. But I also know we met a couple of years ago through Forbes Riley, and boy, I know it's have- almost been two years now. It's crazy. July yeah. yeah. of 2019. Yes. And boy, have you come a long way and it's just been so wonderful to watch you. Not that you weren't already there, you're already an author, but watching you progress even more and more has been just fascinating for me. I live vicariously through you some days. (laughs) So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you came to be the clutter expert and so on. Oh, gosh. Well, all right. How much time do we have? No. Um, I am, yes, the clutter expert. I, I got that name ultimately because I know how to help you clear the clutter at the root and keep it from coming back because you've cleared the surface over and over again. And what inevitably happens is it comes right back. And that's what used to happen for me. I was the cluttered, messy kid. You could not walk through my room. The entire floor was covered and I was completely fine living like that. I wasn't like my clients coming to me like, oh, I need help. I should get organized. Yeah, no, like I was fine like that. The only time it ever became a problem was when my mom got really mad and was tired of looking at it and wanted something done with it. And she'd eventually come in and clean it up. But what would inevitably happen? it was just right back to the way that it was in no time. And the reason why is because the outside matches the inside. There's a a principle in operation in the universe. It's a law called the principle of correspondence. And it states as above, so below, or as within, so without. Or you may be more familiar with it as, as on earth, as it is in heaven. So the outside mirrors the inside. And I didn't realize that at the time because At that time, being so young, I was already littered with clutter growing up. I was full of repressed emotion from trauma and loss, resentments, fears, limiting beliefs, judgments, you name it. All of that stuff was accumulating inside of me, and I didn't realize it at the time. And then I experienced what I consider to be the dark night of my soul, and that was losing my older brother to suicide. And it was way more involved than that. I was actually living with him at the time. I was the one who discovered his body. And in the same moment of finding him, I inherited all of his belongings. So a 15-year-old had to, who was already a cluttered mess had to then deal with all of my brother's stuff. So that pretty much just sent me into a downward spiral. I was not expected to make it to see my 18th birthday alive. Pretty much all bets were off. And I actually got kicked out of my high school for being a danger to myself and others. And I don't remember this, but one of my family members remembers that I jumped off some balcony or something at school. I'm like, I don't remember this, but they kicked me out and they said, you can't come back until you get intensive therapy. And what that looks like for a 15 year old kid is going to live in a residential treatment center for adolescents for the next year and a half of my life. Woohoo! away from my friends, away from my family, away from anything that I knew. I lived in a house and went to school on the same property. We literally walked up the trail and went to school in a separate building and we lived on campus. And that's what I did for the next year and a half of my life. But while I was living there, I was introduced to yoga and mindfulness. And ultimately what yoga and mindfulness taught me was how to come home and be present in my body for all of that inner clutter that I call it, the repressed emotions, the resentments, the fears, the limiting beliefs, the judgments, all of that stuff. And what happened like miraculously is that that cluttered, messy kid who was fine living in filth, it wasn't just stuff, within a year's time went from that to someone who could no longer tolerate disorder. I had to have order in my environment. Now, Caveat here is I didn't let go of all of my attachments to my things at once, but the need to have order and have everything in its place and be organized happened first. And then gradually after looking at my things over and over again, I would let go of those things that I was attached to. And and so I went from that cluttered, messy kid to someone who actually loved creating order out of chaos, someone who was fine living in chaos to someone who loves creating order out of chaos. And I always knew that my experiences 
and I would be helping people someday. I didn't know what that would look like, but I always knew that I was going to have my own business or help someone in some way. And so my windy path was energy healing, yoga teaching, martial art, yoga teacher training, martial arts, and all these things that I thought I was going to do until I got to this place in my life where I was like, oh, well, I love creating order out of chaos. And I have this background in energy healing and can hold really safe space for people. And so I saw that show Hoarders for the first time and became absolutely horrified. And I just wanted to help people get to the root of the clutter so it didn't get like that in the first place, but also help people keep it from coming back. So that's ultimately how I became the clutter expert. That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, you were wondering, I know that you have, uh, you, you don't have the history of bulimia and you're saying, well, why am I here? <laughs> uh, reason why I asked you to come on is because I know um, there's a lot of us who struggled with bulimia and, and my listeners, uh, a lot of them are still struggling with it. I think clutter is an issue with us, whether it's us creating the clutter or other people around us creating the clutter, which causes stress. And that stress is something that makes it more difficult to recover. And I believe mm -hmm. that absolutely clearing things out and, and decluttering is a big portion. In fact, I had decluttered a lot when I finally recovered. I got rid of mm. a lot of things and I thought, wow, this is really freeing. Yeah, so if you absolutely. can- I think it's, well, first what I wanna say is that when people hear the word clutter, they automatically think physical stuff accumulating in your environment. And what I wanna be clear is I was talking about inner clutter, right? Well, we all have the same inner clutter. It just manifests differently for different people. And lots of us get all kinds of these manifestations that I'm about to list. I've had almost all of them, but you have your physical clutter. You carry excess weight. You stay in toxic relationships. You binge and purge. You struggle with addiction. You have mounting debt, lack mindset. All of these things are external manifestations of the same internal condition. So when you address the core, the root, everything changes. You clear the clutter in your life. You stop binging and purging. You heal from your addictions. You get out of the toxic relationships. You increase your abundance and things just keep getting better and better. Absolutely. Now, do you find though, because I mean, we we're talking about definitely, but I like that the correlation though to, and absolutely everything you're saying, but when you're decluttering, you're removing some of those internal, like there's that connection. Can you speak more to that? Yeah. So the outside matches the inside. So as you begin to do your inner work, what you're doing ultimately is all of this stuff that's been stuck inside of you. As you begin to do your inner work, you start to release it. And as you begin to release it, you're making space inside of yourself. And because the outside only matches the inside, as you begin to make that space inside, what starts to happen is you need that space outside. And so you start to create order in your environment. And then when it starts to get disordered, it causes stress because you're not a vibrational match to it anymore. You can only tolerate it to a certain level. And then it causes stress because it doesn't match you anymore. And so when it gets messy, you're, it's, you're like, oh, this is stressful because it doesn't match me anymore. You need to do something about it. Whereas you could just sit in a ton of chaos before and not be affected by it until you did your inner work. Like I was fine living in that chaotic mess until I changed inside. It was like, oh, I need, I have to have order. I have to have order. And so ultimately it, you doing your inner work is causing you to create that order. And then when it gets disordered because you're not a match to it anymore, you feel it. So you're like, oh, I can't, I, I can't have that. I need to, I need to have order because that order, it helps, it helps calm you down. Like here's a perfect example. I had to write an article for a newspaper and uh, someone very important in my life, prominent, didn't want to let them down, recommended I should write an article for the paper. And I'm like, shit, this person tells me I need to do this. I need to do it. And I was in the middle of moving. Every time I sat down to write it while I was in the middle of moving, I, I couldn't get two sentences out. Like I would sit there for an hour and nothing would come. I was getting frustrated. It wasn't until I got into my new place and completely unpacked, sat down, wrote it, done, and it got published. But I couldn't write it until the chaos was clear. I just couldn't. So when you're starting to feel that stress, it's just an indicator that you're not a vibrational match to your environment and you need to get it the way you got to get it to match you. That makes a lot of sense. I know uh, I just moved 
And one thing that the packing is bad enough that I, I was a month of, you know, being in this disorder and definitely. I'm the insane one who actually loves packing. Don't you know? I love packing? Well, I love the fact that I was, I was clearing and decluttering at the time. And somebody said, well, just mm -hmm. pack everything and you can do it when you get to the next place. I said, oh no, no, that's the worst thing ever. Like do it now. Oh, pay to move it with you. Yeah. Right. And it takes, um, it takes twice as long to pack doing that, probably three times as long. And more that many supplies. Right. The same with the supplies. No yeah. So, but, uh, but that was funny. But during that month, though, there is chaos. So I, I could feel that imbalance. I could feel that. And I just couldn't wait to get to the other side. When I get to the other side, I needed to get them all unpacked exactly like you were saying. Then I got there and I've never been happier. This is like, the best place I've ever been. And, nice. uh, and it's just lovely. But yeah, during that period though, of decluttering, it's, it's fun, but you also have to say you wake up the next morning and there's like boxes there and there's, you know, it's not your typical, you know, everything. <laughs> a little you chaotic. And you're like, where is everything? And then you move into your new place and you had everything set up in your room. It's like, where did I put that? Where is yeah. that now? Where is it now? But fun part is, when you do do that, there are things that you didn't know you had that you were looking for forever, or you knew you had, but you were looking for, you didn't know where they were. Now you can put it in a place you can find it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I love oh. that. And I think that this is a message that people really do need to, um, to hear. And to that, I'd love you to speak about your, your books, because uh, I, I think that it's very worthwhile for the listeners to pick them up and read them. So please share with that. Yeah. So I wrote my own book, Freedom from Clutter, the guaranteed foolproof step-by-step -step process to remove the stuff that's weighing you down. And it's definitely not about physical clutter. Um, like you've heard me say, that's just a symptom. So you will get some tools and tips and step-by-steps, but ultimately I'm teaching you about all the forms of clutter in that you can grab, you can download that whole book for free at freegiftfrommel.com. That's just free gift from my name, mel.com. You download the whole book for free and it actually comes with a free coaching call in the back of it. All you have to do is follow the instructions. And I am a contributing author to, I think, four other books at this point, One Habit for Entrepreneurial Success, One Habit of the World's Greatest Leaders, and then the 13 Steps to Riches book, Desire, and 13 Steps to Riches book, Faith, and Auto Suggestion coming out soon. We got, what, 10 more books in the series is a total of 13. So I'll have 13 more books coming out over the next year and a half. <laughs> Fantastic. That's excellent. And also you are the host of the Mel Mason Show. Can you tell us about that? And what do you, like, who are your guests or... How does that yeah, work? happy to. So it's called the Mel Mason Show. It's basically a digital talk show where I am highlighting and spotlighting other experts, coaches, authors, mentors, thought leaders, healers, light workers that address all the different manifestations of clutter. Um, so I'm ultimately just spotlighting and highlighting them. Then. It's about a 30 minute episode. It airs on legrity.tv. That's L E G R I T Y dot TV. You don't need a special membership to watch it. You can just watch it from your phone, your tablet. You just need access to the internet. So it's a made up word of uh, legacy and integrity. They created the word legrity as uh, two of the pillars of their company. So legrity.tv, the Mel Mason show. Uh, I think there's like 12 episodes already on there that you can watch that have uh, been airing since July. And uh, yeah, I mean, we got Laurel Langmeyer, Forbes Riley. We got all kinds of fun stuff on there. Congratulations on that too. That was exciting to hear about that. And uh, then I want to just, I know we've touched on the stuff I needed to, but I'm just really curious if you could tell us all these adventures you're going on. Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, it's just so exciting. Seriously, listeners, if you, you can like follow Mal, it's just, it's inspiring to watch her. So tell us a little bit about that whole, because it's been fairly recent where you've done all this which one? Like I've done so much. Anything specific right. that you want me? So what? So what? So what got you suddenly to say, okay, this is it. I'm going to. I'm just going to live life. 
It's all about, it's your birthright to thrive. My whole, my whole premise and key of why I do what I do is that it's your birthright to thrive and experience happiness and abundance in every area of your life. And clutter is anything that gets in the way of it. That's the way that I look at it. And so I'm all about thriving in every area of your life. It's your birthright. And so I'm just living the dream. I'm living life. I'm, I'm enjoying life. I just spent three days in San Diego for an event called Secret, Secret Knock, where I got to stand on the shoulders of giants you know, with the founder of Pictionary. I mean, the founder of Constant Contact. I mean, Joe Dispenza was there. I mean, the old, the rapper Coolio was there. I mean, I met the rapper Coolio and got to hug the rapper Coolio. I mean, so many amazing people. And we had a red carpet, you know, soiree. I got my picture taken, interviewed for the red carpet. I mean, that just standing on the shoulders of giants is just absolutely amazing. Um, that's been phenomenal. I uh, had my, what, well, God, I, go climbing all the time. I'm into indoor rock climbing, rock climbing. So I'm always climbing or hiking. Um, anything else coming to mind that I'm missing that you've been watching? <laughs> oh, you've been, I'm just waiting. Did you, I know that you were going to go parachuting. Did you so I, sky, I did my skydive. Okay. I, I'm, I, so the next step is I have to go back for grounds training. I literally have to spend 13 hours doing grounds training. I got to be there from like seven in the morning till eight at night where they teach me everything. They teach me how to fly in a wind tunnel. And then my next jump will be just with an instructor clipped to me and I'll be doing everything on my own. And I really have so to ask you too. <laughs> Do you have any uh, future ambition of rock climbing, like really doing what we see on TV that scares oh, I love doing outdoor rock climbing. I just have to find a group to go with. I just got started back into it again. I had, I had done a little rock climbing when I was younger in my twenties, been to camps and things like that and done some uh, outdoor adventure things and some rappelling. And I knew I loved it. And right after my marriage ended, I took up indoor climbing because we had a gym like 30 minutes away. And it was, it's a great way to do a full body workout. And I don't like to go to the gym and work out. I've always been someone who's either had a job that was my workout, like moving furniture in a 10,000 square foot warehouse for eight years or doing demolition or being a, an, a brick tender. So it's always been physical things. I've always liked to do physical things. So I, I love climbing because it's just, it's full body and I started right after my marriage ended. And then that was in October. And then by March, the gym shut down because of COVID. And then they didn't reopen. They went out of business. And so the closest climbing gym to me is an hour and a half away. And I'm so committed and so passionate about climbing when I got back into it. I'm like, oh, I'll go once a month because it's so far away. I'm there two to three days a week. I get up at 1.30 in the morning to get there before everybody else does because I have 24-hour access. So. That's awesome. I guess that's another thing too. You know, a lot of uh, when we uh, going through, well, I mean, working out and, and activity and stuff, I think that's very important. What you're saying is find something you love to do. Uh, you don't have to go to a gym. I mean, even if it's as simple as walking or whatever the case or find, I, I loved rollerblading. That was my favorite thing. Yeah. I really have to get back to it. Uh, I have rollerblades, I'm thinking, but the, I know this is often, I shouldn't think this way because I am quite fit, but I keep thinking, what if I fall? I'm 59 now. <laughs> you know, elbow pads are for, that's why you wear elbow pads and knee pads and a helmet. If I'm you gonna fall. Wearing, I'm going to be looking like the Michelin man. <laughs> of course, this is, this is. <laughs> but no, I'm looking forward to doing that because there's nice places around here now that I can do that. It's a lot harder when you're in a busy street and things like that. So it's to find that, yeah. but there's no excuse. I could have always driven, you know, if you do tend to end up having that passion. Hey, I can drive an hour and a half to go climb for an hour. So I drive three hours to go get an hour, hour and a half workout in. Wow. That is awesome. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. Uh, and then so I hike on the other days, either hike or ride my bike on the other days. Like I just met a group this morning at 5 a.m. for a sunrise. Oh, that wasn't even sunrise. It was pre-sunrise. The sun was rising as we were driving home. Our little 5 a.m. morning walk with the mayor of La Quinta and some other people. That's nice. And that's a good idea, too. I remember we used to actually do that, get together with a group. When I lived in Reno, there were three of us or four of us that used to go and get, you know, get together. And now with COVID over, that's that's a really great idea to do. So, uh, yeah. so. What's your next project other than the, the other books? 
<laughs> so I literally just finished a five-day live conference where I interviewed 32 experts called Dare to Thrive. So I put on these conferences, Dare to Thrive. My next one is actually going, I don't have any back end set up yet, but it is going to be November 4th. So if you do download my book, you'll be on my email list and you'll get notified when that event is. It's completely free. I'll have 12 to 16 experts for one day, we'll do a little mini conference and just provide some amazing content because it's your birthright to thrive in every area of your life. And I'm all about bringing all these experts together and sharing their messages with you. So my, I'm on a mission to empower people around the world to get free from clutter inside and out so you can thrive and experience happiness and abundance in every area of your life. So that's why I put on these events. So I got another one November 4th, and then I'll have one coming up in January and March. So I constantly do them all over again. And I don't know when this airs, but I have a five-day challenge literally starting today. And I do those all the time too. So if you get on my mailing list, then you'll know when these events are happening and you won't miss any of them. We'll have this air today for sure, because I actually registered for that. And oh, awesome. oh, okay. time is perfect because you're, you're Pacific time. And, uh, and so it's, it's later in the day. So my podcasts are all done by the time it's there and it's in my calendar. So I'm looking awesome. forward to that. So this will air today. So we'll definitely, uh, what would be the best way for them to sign up quicker as, as soon as possible if they were to listen to this and go, yes, I want to be a part of that. If, if you just download my book, Freedom from Clutter, if you just get a free gift from Mel, you're going to be on the email list and get notified. Uh, that's the easiest way. Um, or you can just uh, email me at info at decluttering spaces.com or you can register for the event that just happened it, you'll you'll get the free gift links and everything and you can still buy the vip access if you want the replays um, and there's over thirteen thousand dollars in products and courses that the experts contributed to the vip bundle and you get it all for 47 dollars. so there's that option as well so you just go to dare to thrive.net um, and you can still register for the event and get all the free gifts. And if you want the VIP bundle, then you pay $47 and you get over $13,000 in products and courses. And Forbes Riley put her ultimate pitch formula in there. Which I have to say it's excellent. Yes. Yeah, all of her absolutely. courses are amazing. Very Just that program. alone. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then Laurel Langmeyer put in two tickets to the marketplace where you're gonna, if you don't have an item to sell, you'll have an item to sell, you'll learn how to sell and you'll make money by the end of 13 hours over the course of two days. So oh, just that alone is well over worth 14, $47, so. Absolutely. Daredrive.net. Yeah, absolutely. Drive.net. I will have all of these links too in the notes. Uh, so okay. if anybody misses that or if they're listening and they want to go back and find that, these will all be in the notes. Mel, thank you for your time. I know you're a super busy lady, so I really appreciate your time here and being on and sharing that. And again, uh, I highly recommend her book uh, and, and looking forward to your other books that are coming out as well. So, My pleasure. Thanks, thanks so much for having me. It's always an honor to be here with you. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode. Be sure to visit me at bleepbulimia.com.